If you've been using social media over the past couple of years, which I'm sure you'll have, you'll have noticed that the in-camera transition effect has become really, really popular amongst creators. Unlike a transition that you can add in post-production, like a fade or a push or a wipe, an in-camera transition is actually shot into the footage. So that means the filmmaker is actively doing an action or a movement in which they are planning to create a visual effect for their audiences. In-camera transitions can be used for a variety of purposes, perhaps things like making time appear faster, transporting audiences to a different location, or just creating a really exciting visual effect. Go on TikTok, Snapchat or Instagram just for five minutes and you'll see many of these appear. That's because camera technology is so light and portable nowadays that it's very, very easy to create these effects while we're filming. Now there are so many different types of in-camera transitions that you guys can try at home in your own projects. But to get you started, I've headed out to the streets of London to give you my top five. And then I'm gonna show you how we edit them together in LumaFusion. Our first in-camera transition is called the lens cover. So in this scenario, we're going to cover the lens with our hand or an object to block out all of the light from the camera. Then at the beginning of our second shot, we're gonna pull our hand away to reveal the scene like this. This next transition is called the 180 degree spin. And that's because at the end of our first clip, we're going to turn our cameras either left or right 180 degrees, really, really fast. And then at the beginning of our second clip, we're gonna start with our cameras upside down, turn our phones in the same direction, 180 degrees, and then keep going with the action, just like this. Our next transition is the whip pan, where we're gonna whip our camera really, really quickly to the left or right and start our second shot in exactly the same direction, whipping it very, very fast, like this. Our next transition is the lens wipe, where we're gonna use our hand to wipe across the lens in the first and second shot. You must remember though, in this transition, to wipe in exactly the same direction each time, like this. Our last transition today is the noise cut. So in this scenario, we're going to make a noise or a sound in our first clip. And in our second clip, we're gonna make the exact same noise, but we're going to cut the clips together where that noise took place, like this. So those are some fun in-camera transitions that you can get started with. But of course, once you've filmed those, you need to edit them. So I'm gonna grab LumaFusion, I'm gonna open up the app, and I'm gonna talk you through how I would edit them on the LumaFusion timeline so they play nice and smoothly. So here you can see I'm in my LumaFusion editor and I've placed all of my pieces to camera on the main track of the timeline in the order I want them to play out. Now I haven't actually trimmed them perfectly yet, of course, I've just placed them in the order that I filmed them. And I made sure when I was filming that the end of my first clip is gonna be the start of my second clip. So I had the lens cover. I made sure that the end of my second clip was going to be the beginning of my first clip. So I had the 180 degree spin and so on, okay? So in between each of these clips, I made sure the transition was the same so it's gonna smoothly run on in the edit. So just before we kick off, I'm just gonna go through my clips and I'm just gonna make sure I've color coded these just so it's easier for you guys to see. Now, if you haven't added a color tag to your work before on the timeline, all you're gonna do is make sure that your clip is selected. You're going to tap on this eye icon here to get more information about that clip and you're just gonna give it a color, okay? So I'm gonna color tag that purple. You can see as I've tapped that, the color of the clip here on the timeline is gonna change. So I'm just gonna go through and I'm just going to change the colors of these. I like working this way personally because I find it's easier to see which piece I'm working on, which clip I've selected and so on. It's completely up to you if you choose to do this. Sometimes it's really good to do this if you're working on really complex projects. Now to just close this, I'm gonna tap that eye icon and now you can see on my timeline, the further zoomed out I am, I don't see the colors, but I can see them here in this preview bar. But if I zoom in to any of the clips, I'm gonna see those colors play out, which might make it easier for you just to manage your material, but that's up to you as I say. So to edit in camera transitions and to make them flow smoothly, what you need to do is think about the end and the beginning of each clip, okay? So the transition that you've created when you were shooting the material. Now at this transition here, this is all about taking the light away from the lens. So you can see there, that is the frame that my screen goes black. You see, my hand is coming towards the lens. I'm going through this frame by frame by just swiping on the preview screen. And now as soon as the screen goes black, 
I'm going to tap the scissor icon down here at the bottom and I'm going to delete the rest of that clip. Now all I'm looking for is the complete black frame from the next clip. Okay, so you can see about there I would say. I think that looks good. I'm going to tap the scissor icon. I'm going to delete the bit I don't want. And now when I play this through, it's going to look like I've just tapped the lens and I've just magically transported location. To reveal the scene like this. This next trans You see how quick that was, okay? So you don't want to prolong the time that you've got that black, you know, shade on screen. You just want it to be just really, really quick and smooth. Okay, so I'm going to go to my second clip here. Now this transition, you can see this is the 180 degree spin. So what I've done is I filmed my piece to camera and I've spun my hand around just to turn the camera upside down. Now this is all about getting that blurred motion in the actual frame here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just go down, zoom in, I'm gonna find a bit of blurred motion where I'm kind of upside down, okay? So you see I kind of stopped there, so I wanna find this blurred motion. So I'm just gonna cut that there, I might change this in a minute. But you can see at this bit here, I need to find the exact moment where my head is turning at the same time. So it's quite fun. So you can see, okay, I'm going upside down now. Okay, my head is spinning. Just as my head is gonna start spinning, I'm gonna turn it, okay? So about there. Let's see how that looks. And then keep going with the action, just like this. Our next okay, now if it doesn't look like it's going smoothly enough, you just need to edit this frame by frame, go and find the perfect bits. So keep moving, maybe I'll tr trim this down a little bit more. I think that looks a bit better. So my head is in similar position between each of those frames. You see I don't have to play it every time, I'm just dragging the timeline along. Our next transition is... The Lovely, okay, let's move on to the next one now. Okay, so this one here, you can see this is all about the whip pan. So we're looking again for blurred frames. So I've whipped my camera to the side here. So I don't want this section here because I've just stopped the camera there, okay? So I want the busiest frame that I can find. I think that frame looks quite busy. I'm gonna cut my clip, delete that bit I don't want. And on my next scene there, I've obviously whipped it in the same way. I'm going to find another busy frame, chop my clip down, whipping it very very fast like this. Our next transition. You see how it goes so quick that the human eye doesn't really even see the difference in these clips. So I play it quickly and it just seems to blur from one scene to the next. Like this. Our next transition. So that's why we're looking for the blur in this transition. I'm gonna to go to my next shot here. So this one is all about the lens wipe, okay? So you've gotta be really, really careful on this one that you're gonna get the right frame. So do frame by frame editing at this point. So you're gonna go along bit by bit. Okay, there is my hand, okay? Can you see one more and I'll have missed it. You don't wanna see my face here. So we're gonna go back to where my hand is mostly covering the lens. So I'm gonna cut and I'm going to delete. And I'm gonna go and find the exact frame where my hand is going on top of the lens again. There, okay. Not there, not there, but that frame. Exactly the same direction each time, like this. Our last transition today is... Lovely jubbly, and keep going, last one. Okay, so this is the noise cut. So you want to cut exactly where, in this scenario, where my fingers are going to click. Okay, so my fingers click at the end of this frame and the beginning of this frame, as you can see here. So I'm gonna go and find the bit where my fingers actually move. Here we go. So I've just snapped there. So just before I snapped, I'm gonna keep it on this frame. You see there, I've already snapped. So one frame back, I haven't snapped. So on my next, clip, I'm going to make sure that I've got the snap selected. I'm 
I think that was the snap at that point. Let's see this. Clips together where that noise took place, like this. So those are some fun in camera. Beautiful. Okay, wonderful. And then at the end, just make sure you're finishing on a nice frame there. I always finish with a little smile. And then there we go. So there you go. You see, it doesn't take that long to edit. You just need to make sure that you're doing this frame by frame editing. You're being very particular with the order in which you're going to place your clips. Remember, if you don't have your in camera transitions in your mind before you film, it might not flow. You see how before I actually recorded this piece, I knew I was going to do a lens cover. So that means I knew at the beginning of this clip, I needed to do a lens reveal. And then, you know, at the end of this clip, I was going to do a 180 degree spin. So I knew at the beginning of this clip to start with it. You see, so it goes on bit by bit. But anyway, have a play around with these, choose your favorite and see how you get on. So as you can see, in-camera transitions can really add an element of fun and creativity to your projects. So give those a go, let us know how you get on. And of course, if you've done any yourself, please put the link in the comments below and we'll be sure to check those out. For more tips, tricks and techniques, join me over at the Lumatouch Academy.